why you think we're moving too soon I love to hear you when you complain About your best friend, how she's so late And as you're talking, I start thinking All the details start to sink in But I don't care about that right now I Spend the summer in this beach house Good morning, you guys. What's up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Tess, and today I thought I would just film a little vlog. I am setting up for a little video. I was thinking about doing like a what's in my shower tour and really focusing on body care because I know some of you are interested in that. Don't mind that leaf lower I feel like there's always always something but I am just gonna make my face a little bit more presentable and I have some new fun skin things so I thought I would show you guys and just do a little I don't know if I'd call it makeup just everyday makeup in a true sense of the word recently I got this new product which was a bit of a splurge it is from color science and it is the all calm clinical redness corrector SPF 50 and I have heard two dermatologists now strongly strongly recommend this product so I finally caved and got it so I know some of you ask about rosacea and what you can do for it. This is one of the top recommendations from dermatologists for rosacea. It's not sponsored at all. Um, so I'm giving it a try. I put a little bit on this morning and at first I wasn't sure about the texture, um, but it really helps to calm and soothe the skin, which is super important for rosacea. Just keeping things calm and cool and just being really mindful of any sensitizing things. This is what it looks like. I'm just gonna put a little bit more on. I, yeah, the consistency, I think it's growing on me. Um, at first I was like, whoa, this looks like putty almost. It's, it's thick and I was worried it was going to be too matte because it's mineral based um, and sometimes those formulas can be too matte but I really like it and it's a nice kind of like base before makeup um, so worth a try if you have rosacea and you feel like you've ex exhausted a lot of things this could be a good one for you. Um, Vitamin C is also another great thing to take orally or use topically in a serum form. Always consult with your doctor on that, but just wanted to give you guys a little little tip. I think we're just color sciencing it up today. I I recently tried color science and I've been really impressed. You guys probably know from my last couple of videos, I'm really liking this. It's the Sun Forgettable total protection face shield it's very very light and glowy and it has good sun protection this new little brush from real techniques i don't know putting on makeup feels so funny in quarantine because i'm like who do i have to press but obviously you guys um i don't know i've been struggling with content ideas i mean i have ideas but I don't know, something about YouTube, I feel like the views just aren't where they they used to be and it's probably because you guys get tired of watching me in my house. I feel like people like movement um, and change and obviously I'm quarantined so <laughs> it's not as exciting as say like my Derma Plus vlogs, things like that. I can't wait to be able to film those again for you guys. Oh, any ideas or like things on your mind as far as skincare that you're just curious about, please comment. It can be literally anything. It can be anything. And I can do so much with your guys' comments. You don't realize like how valuable your feedback is to me. I can make a podcast out of it. I can make an Instagram post um, because the questions you guys have are really, really good. And if you're wondering, 
I know somebody else is wondering. And I don't know. I feel like there's some things that might be obvious to me about my routine or skin that maybe you're not so sure about. So let me know. Please let me know. Something I've recently realized from I have this little periodontal dermatitis patch. I wish wasn't there, but it is. I love this stuff. It is the Drunk Elephant Deep Bronzy anti-pollution sunshine drops this is really one of the only things i like from this line i'm kind of i don't know i don't have the greatest sentiments to them um because there's some of their interactions with um brands and whatnot and um i think they could do better but i really love this as a makeup product the bronzer it's fantastic especially if you have a dry skin type talking to renee rollo recently she really emphasized you know how makeup can be a good thing because you're providing a barrier between the environment it's interesting because there's skincare is not black and white right it's so personal to each person and what works for somebody or even what I'm saying you know what works may not work for you you may just notice you totally break out after wearing makeup because it's it's too much layering and for some I think uh this looks crazy but it's gonna blend um I think for some that extra layer can be damaging and you really have to tread lightly but for some it's wonderful because Putting that kind of shield between yourself and the environment is really, really valuable. Especially if you have mature skin or dry skin, fair skin, it's important to protect your skin. It's the environment and the sun that is really a, corp uh, a culprit of more advanced aging. Um, so makeup doesn't have to be the devil. I think these are great products, the ones I'm using, if you want to consider like how you can use makeup to be more beneficial in your skin. Um, Color Science is a fantastic brand. People always ask, what mineral makeups do you like? Because I tend to recommend mineral makeup um, if I'm recommending makeup at all. So I would say my favorites are Jane Iredale and Color Science at the moment. I know there's a lot of other brands out there, so please let me know if there's another brand you like. I would love to try it. And I think Bare Minerals is a great, great, good old standby as well. I really like their highlighter and bronzer. Okay, I think that's my base. That's what we're gonna do. And I might just keep it pretty simple with a little mascara and a brow. I'm really cautious about makeup brushes if you are using a makeup sponge i really strongly encourage you to toss it out i'm sorry i know the beauty blenders are so popular and people love them they're great great for blending out makeup i think they do a beautiful job but sponges hold a lot of bacteria it's nearly impossible to fully clean them and, and get rid of that bacteria which is the culprit for breakout and so many skin conditions so I'm just I'm not a fan of the beauty blenders real techniques sponges any sponges unless they're disposable I think really not the best for your skin so I prefer brushes and I wash them after each use which is I know a lot of people can't get themselves to do that and relate to it um, but for me it's just it's not a big deal I'll often just use my face wash to clean the brush or a little bit of sulfate free shampoo works amazing and I clean them and I store them in I know it's plastic which is not ideal but I got this in my school supply kit um when I was in esthetician school, I got this um, in my kit and I store my brushes in here. And I know it's not the cutest thing in the world, but I just wanted to like find another purpose for it. And it's great 
fits all my stuff and the important thing about it is it keeps the brushes from collecting dirt, bacteria, debris, dust, just all that stuff. I know it's really cute to just display your brushes like on your vanity but there's so much stuff that gets collected in the air that you don't want on your brushes and you don't want to be rubbing that on your face adding friction with the debris and the bacteria is it can be a problem especially for acne prone people so that's a little trick store your brushes i got a question on tiktok about that recently so i thought i'd just bring it up again if you guys want to follow me on tiktok my handle is the same as my Instagram handle. I'll put it right here. I'm obsessed with TikTok. It's just kind of fun to have that like short form um, content. Like if I wanna show you guys something really simple and quick or just like have a few skin tips I wanna share, I'll just make a TikTok because it takes way less time than a YouTube video and I feel like that's where a lot of attention is going right now. You have to love the process. If you don't love the process and you're doing it just for views or to, because you think it's like a quick way to make money, I'm sorry, my friend, it's just not true. I think, I mean, YouTube can be really lucrative and you guys, if you're not familiar with like making YouTube videos, you probably just don't, you don't understand how much time goes into filming, editing, um, thumbnails, descriptions, tags, marketing the video. Each video probably takes at least three hours total if you consider, consider all the work. You're typically not paid, you know, until years on in the journey unless you can really blow up quick which i've never had like a viral video anything like that it's just been a slow slow steady climb it can be discouraging but i just have to remind myself i do it for you guys i do it for the community which you probably hear people say all the time um but you guys are such a big part of my life like you really are i i think about you guys and when I'm making content I think the reason it's one of the reasons it's enjoyable is because like I know you guys on that personal level so I can literally like visualize who I'm talking to I feel like the girl I have in mind is I have a very specific vision she's not a particular skin color she's not a particular like living in a certain location but I like I see her and it's it's kind of like a blend of all of you guys who I talk to on a regular basis in one if that makes sense um um your messages keep me going like when I get a message that you're graduating or you've gotten your first job and some of my tips have helped you in some way like that really lights me up and fulfills me on a deeper level which there's not that many things in life that do that for you like so many things in life are just um, I don't know I've had so many jobs and so many of them don't give back to you so that's why I love it it gives something back to me that's how I feel about aesthetics as a career too when you find those clients who fill you up and like truly value your worth and give give something back to you energy wise um i think that's what it's all about i don't know if you guys watched the bachelor which i'm so excited for tasha's season i feel like i'm just <laughs> basically living for that moment when the bachelor comes back a lot of people uh, had like memes and comments about maggie pruitt's <laughs> um mascara i loved it i kind of think that spidery lash look is really fun so i bought the mascara she uses and i i like it i kind of like a little um chunky spider lash so if you like that look this is what she uses the maybelline new york lash stiletto okay enough rambling that is it just a very simple makeup look so i can film this video for you guys we're in my bathroom and I am setting up for 
my next video, which is going to be a what's in my bathroom slash body care, what's in my shower kind of thing. I thought it would just be kind of fun. I know there's a lot of interest in what we can do for our body care beyond just what we do on our face. I feel like a lot of you guys have seen my what I use on my face, so I don't know if that's getting old, but there's not a ton of emphasis on body care, I feel like. So I wanted to show you guys some things I do and use. This is what the setup looks like. My ring light fell in the sink and um, yeah, that's that. This is my little stand. There's always this, just setting up the camera is probably the biggest challenge <laughs> as a YouTuber for me. Finding a good angle, finding good lighting. I'm always experimenting with that. And I think that's something that comes with time with YouTube. Like if I look back on my older videos, that's the one like most embarrassing thing my lighting is horrible my setup is awkward so always trying to improve that for you guys but I am going to be filming and talking about these beautiful products why I use them etc I want to talk about keratosis pilaris the little chicken skin or little bumps you might get on your arm on your arms, back of arms, or on your face. I'm going to be talking about some some product for that, as well as body acne, what I use for that. Um, Self-tanning, I know is a question people ask a lot about self-tanner, so I'm going to share that with you. And anything in the shower of interest? Yes, my favorite body washes, especially those of you who have dry skin or keratosis pilaris or who just want to prep your skin nicely for shaving. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, shaving cream, how I prevent ingrowns, and yeah, lots of exfoliator talk. So be on the lookout for that if you guys are interested in what I do for body care. So I am back from a little walk. I was out there for about an hour which is pretty good i feel not necessarily sick but i feel like i don't know just not not the best so i didn't want to do anything crazy and push it but i have been cooped up in my apartment haven't worked out for a few days so i kind of just wanted to like you know just get out and i feel like there's definitely something to sunshine and, and fresh air and just a um, little bit of like light and movement that's I think can be really beneficial for health so that felt good to do that and I am going to take a shower and do my nighttime skincare routine before I make dinner I think I've said before that I really like doing my skincare as early in the evening if if possible so that's a tip I have for you to just start your skincare routine when you get home when you get home from work or as soon as you can sometimes it's nice to do it after dinner so you have a clean face and you can go to bed with a totally clean face um, but just in general doing your routine earlier has a lot of benefits for the skin. Your skin does function a little bit differently in the evenings. In the daytime, it's more in defense mode against the environment and UVA, UVB, sun damage, pollution, environmental factors. And then nighttime is really the time for your skin to repair and renew and turn over those cells. It acts actually excretes different substances at night, which is really interesting. So things like human growth hormone are really, really beneficial for the skin. It's what allows it to produce new collagen and again, just repair. So think anti-aging. So nighttime, it's best to just set yourself up with a clean canvas. We never want to go to bed with a dirty face. Never want to bring the streets to the sheets. We want to go to bed with clean skin and ingredients that are going to enhance that cell turnover repair process. So for me, typically it's retinol. That is my favorite anti-aging ingredient, that and vitamin C. Those two 
are very key in my routine. I don't use my retinol every night. And if my skin is feeling a little bit like I'm having a little perioral dermatitis flare, for example, right around the corners of my mouth and from wearing the mask, um, it doesn't help that it kind of exacerbates. So I may skip the retinol tonight and just do a little bit of a more simple routine, but we'll see. We'll kind of see what I feel like. I'm gonna hop in the shower and wash my face and then I will join you guys for the rest of my routine. Well, that thought, I just realized I have makeup on my face. I almost forgot because it's kind of light and it's just like tinted moisturizer, bronzer situation, but I still wanna remove it so that I can get as thorough of a cleanse as possible. So I tend to like either my makeup eraser, which is a great tool, or a little bit of micellar water. And I look for ones that are formulated without added fragrance or stripping alcohol. So there are definitely more, I guess, affordable options. The simple micellar water at the drugstore is a good affordable option. I have been using for probably about a year now, I've been using the Bioderma version and I, I like the size of it. It's easy to travel with if you need to, not that I'm doing that, um, but it's just, it's, it's, it doesn't take up a lot of space. I think it's really cute. This was about $5 and it tends to last me a few months. So. I don't mind purchasing it. Just use my little cotton pads. I am so excited to get Derma Plus has the new reusable cotton pads. So very excited to get my hands on some of, some of those and just be a little bit more sustainable. Um, but for now, this is what I will use. And it's important to remember micellar water is not a toner. I think there's a little bit of confusion sometimes. It's not something you would do post cleanse on the skin because really the purpose of a toner is pH balance and and rebalancing the skin this is just more of a cleanse so you don't want to leave any of these ingredients on your skin what these little tiny micelles pull part the dirt and every all the makeup on your skin so pretty incredible so I just get as much of the makeup off with this as I can and then I still always do a double cleanse so I will do that in the shower but I tend to use like a cream cleanser and then my normal Derma Plus Chamomile cleanser and I use my little silicone cleansing brush with that one um, a lot of estheticians and I know a lot of people are into oil cleansing these days and though it is not my forte, I would say do what works for you. I prefer a cream cleanser because I find it emulsifies better and then you have less chance of leaving a residue on your skin. I think a lot of people are almost addicted to oil cleansing because it's it's satisfying to work with oil, I think, and it leaves the skin feeling conditioned and um, soft. But a lot of times that is because it's, you know, an oil or a um, conditioner that's left on the skin. And I just feel it's sort of counterproductive to use an oil on the skin that's going to create more of a problem and if you are acne prone it's not something I would recommend in my opinion every esthetician is different and that's what is beautiful about the industry I feel like I'm almost more of in the minority category of those who don't love oil cleansers so if it works for you by all means use what works for you 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 know have the experience of working with your skin on a daily basis so even as an esthetician I can't necessarily um, know on a regular basis how your skin is reacting to things um, you know that better so if you're not experiencing breakout if you are having success in your skincare routine by all means use your oil cleanser everyone has different um, philosophies but I have found with everyone I work with um, and through discussions with 
my mentors and people I align with, we just don't see people who are acne prone, who already have enough oil present in the skin, um, doing well adding more oil. But that is just my opinion. Again, you gotta do what works for you. Okay, in the eye area, I try to be better about this because even I get impatient, but I think it works best if you can just hold the product and the um, cotton round over your eyes and allow the little micelles to pull to pull the mascara off your lashes. If you wear makeup under the jaw, which is where I contour, don't forget to get that area as well. Look at the, that was underneath my jawline. It's crazy. Now I'm going to hop in the shower and do my double cleanse and I will be back. This is honestly my favorite time of day when you are done with your major responsibilities and you can take a nice warm shower and put on your nice skincare and a cozy robe and have dinner and wind down. That's the name of the game. So I'm using the Derma Plus Hydrating Toner. This is probably my favorite product in my routine if I had to pick one, which is very hard to do because they're all my babies. But this, I've just, I've tried every toner in the book and my purifying toner is probably my other favorite, but the Derma Plus toners are standouts I think they really really are the purifying is the best I'd say con treatment for congestion as far as a toner I've come across and the hydrating toner hydrates my skin like no other product you could almost some people if if they're acne prone don't even put moisturizer on after which I typically recommend one um but that's just like the level it hydrate your skin. It has aloe and hyaluronic acid, um, all professional grade, so it really binds that moisture to your skin. You will feel the difference. The toner really works to again, balance pH in the skin, which is so important for skin health and preventing conditions like acne or dryness in the skin and it's really going to prepare my skin to receive whatever I put on next. I'm using a new product here. This is a product my dermatologist actually recommended to me which I don't agree with all dermatologists just like I don't agree with all estheticians but I really respect and enjoy my dermatologist. Her name is Dr. Austin in San Francisco and um, this is a product she recommended for my melasma. Very frustrating to treat melasma. And it is called Discoloration Defense by SkinCeuticals, which is another professional line. And it is a blend of skin brighteners. So it has kojic acid and niacinamide and sulfonic acid. So works to reduce the size and intensity of discoloration and she recommends three to five drops in my morning and nighttime routine. Um, so it's something new I am trying out. This is the area right above my lip. <laughs> it's like the little mustache. Um, where I notice my melasma. It can also occur, can occur, occur all over the face. Some people get it in the forehead, some people get it on the cheeks, but um, mine is particularly frustrating because I feel like it looks like a little mustache. So, I mean, it's just, it's a part of life and our skin. I recently posted on Instagram, um, talking about how things we criticize about ourselves are just normal. Like we have visible pores. I'm gonna continue with my routine. We have visible pores because our sweat needs them to function, to cool itself down and just to regulate our temperature, to sweat and you know excrete 
different substances. We have facial hair because it was meant to protect our skin. We show signs of aging because it's just a sign that we've experienced facial expressions. It's a sign that we're human. So melasma is no different. I mean, I'm a female using birth control and unfortunately it just, it's a disorder that can happen with too much heat and sun and hormones and it's just a part of life. Um, but I'm excited to try this serum and see if it has some lightening benefits. I also posted recently on my Instagram about melasma and some possible ways to treat it. So if you're interested, you can go check out that post. My handle is in the description as always. And I just used the Derma Plus Hydrator. It is an oil-free moisturizer. Um, typically, I like this for daytime and I like the normal moisturizer at night because I'm not particularly oily. Um, so I'm applying a little bit more, but this is a water and hyaluronic based moisturizer. It is like a drink of water for your skin and everyone needs moisture. Everyone needs hydration. Everyone needs water to repair and care for their skin. Um, so great option for acne prone or breakout prone skin types. That one is super light. And then eye product, I'm just using the... Neova eye cream that they accidentally <laughs> sent me in my germ store order. So lucky me, they told me to keep it, <laughs> which was really nice. Neova, I think, is a great brand. They have a patent for their copper peptides, which are a great, great anti-aging ingredient. I'm going to end my routine with a little cold tool. Cold tools are also another amazing thing for breakout prone skin or just inflammation like my little perioral dermatitis or my melasma. With those two things, it's really important to keep the skin cool so like after a hot shower, for example, or a hot workout, those are some really good times to do some cold tools, cold rolling. So that is my little nighttime skincare routine. Pretty simple. I'm gonna go ahead and make some dinner and I'm not sure exactly what I wanna make, but I'll show you guys what I come up with. I'm kind of thinking like soup salad combo sounds good. This is our little dinner. I just whipped up super lazy and simple and easy, but whenever I'm not feeling the best, I like to make something warm and I feel like soup is just such a good go-to. So this has a little bit of, it's not vegan, it has some chicken stock. The rest is vegan so you could use a different broth. Um, and then I just threw in some zucchini, carrots, corn, brown rice noodles, a little bit of turmeric, this tiniest bit of garlic powder for flavor. Um, doesn't always work well with my stomach and my IBS, but a little bit of that, a little bit of butter, and a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and a seasoning mix with rosemary and a bunch of yummy stuff. <laughs> it's probably too many details. And then I don't know if my salad looks good, but it's just a little balsamic vinaigrette with a little bit of Dijon mustard dressing and kind of like Italian style with olives, little pepperoncinis, and vegan cheese and avocado. All right, guys, I'm just winding down for the evening, getting all cozy in my sweats, and I wanted to say thank you guys 
so much for watching. Thank you for being you. I do not know what I would do with myself during this quarantine if I didn't have YouTube as an outlet and Instagram and podcast. I feel like just talking to you guys gives me a lot of purpose and I think that's really important to happiness. So I cannot thank you enough. If you are watching, I would so appreciate if you could leave a little comment below about who you are, where you're at in your journey, and a suggestion for a future video because when I don't have suggestions or ideas, I just tend to make, you know, what I think would be fun or interesting to watch and I feel like a lot of the times I'm wrong and views don't do very well. So I would much rather spend the time because um, it does take hours to make one little video. Um, I would just so appreciate knowing what you want to see for the future. That way I can give you the most value um, and just give you something you want to watch. So I would so, so appreciate if you left a comment letting me know what you want to see and my DMs, my YouTube is always open if you ever want to leave a comment or a suggestion. They truly shape and mold my content and I think that's what makes these videos valuable because they're things that you guys don't know that you do want to know about that you do want help with so i would love your feedback thank you guys so much for watching i love you so much i hope you are doing well wherever you are at in this journey just take it day by day i know it can be um tough in the pandemic but just take it day by day we are all in this together try not to get too high or too low that is my advice my little motivational speech before bed i love you guys so so much and i will talk to you in the next video